What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Outdoor Chef Life. I'm Taku and today I'm gonna make the best kelp dish ever. Or I'm gonna attempt to at least. First, I need to go get some kelp. The kelp I want is right there and the water's too high now. But I see some on that side that's accessible, I think. So I'm gonna check over here first. Whoa, look at this. It's like a fossil. There's a scallop on there. That's cool, huh? That's pretty cool. things to mention while harvesting kelp you want to just grab the leafy part and just cut that off don't don't pull out the whole stem or else it won't grow back if you do it that way if you cut it like this it can grow back much more sustainable um, and yeah we'll just keep having more and more another thing I'm gonna eat this kelp so for that I prefer the younger ones like these here, very thin. Uh, the ones that are a little bit deeper are gonna be much bigger and thicker. So they're gonna be harder to eat. Those are better for things like making stocks, dehydrating them and making a stock out of it. That's, that's much better for that, the big ones. The little ones are gonna be good for eating, all right? So these ones are perfect here. This one is called feather boa. I've never tried to eat it because it's so tough. It's a type of kelp also. It doesn't seem very edible because it's like very rubbery, hard, and thick. Got him. Let me get a little bit more. I feel like there he goes. Yeah. Just pulling it out. He watches outdoor shed fly. <laughs> Look at him. Oh, oh he got, got some. Oh, oh there's a crab, a crab oh, on there. He oh, he got it. He got it. Damn, we thought he was trying to be healthy. <laughs> <laughs> now we've changed locations. We're at our... Oh, I got one. Oh, you did? Nice. Now we're at our climbing ground. Hopefully we can find some steamer clams and you guys know the deal if you've been watching my channel You know who really loves clamming over here? <laughs> Little Miss Clammy Gonzalez <laughs> She's already getting to it. If you guys want to do some clamming yourself All you have to do is find a rocky area like this where it's like this kind of gravel Kind of rocks everywhere. Oh, here we go There's one. Let's see. Oh, no It's empty inside and for digging these clams up, these little hoes work perfect. That's what they call it, right? And you know the deal. Fill your holes. Oh, I think I got a keeper. A little under. This hole is an inch and a half. That's how big they have to be. But yeah. Fill your hole. Takes 10 seconds. I'm not going to make this video too much about clams. I want to keep it mainly focused on the kelp. So we'll just do this real quick and uh, we'll show you the end result, I guess. Look at that. Easily legal. Little baby monkey face purple back here. Look at that. Ooh. 
Sashimi time. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I'm not gonna eat him. <laughs> I'll let him go back. There you go, buddy. You can go under this rock. There you go. We didn't find a lot, but found some quality ones. Like these. Oh yeah, this one. And I always leave them sitting in water while we're digging so they can spit out the sand. And by the time we're done, we're ready to cook and these guys don't have any sand inside of them. And it doesn't take that long. If you want to keep these clams alive overnight, just make sure to put them on ice and make sure that they're not underwater. They're not submerged in the water. If they're submerged, they're going to die. But uh, if you just keep them on top, on a perforated pan, something like that, where they're not going to become submerged, then they'll stay alive on ice. I got some salt water here and I have the kelp here from earlier. I'm going to slice that up and I'm going to boil it just how, just like how you would do a pasta. I think maybe half the size of this, maybe like fettuccine size. Something like that. I think that will work. If you roll it up and cut it, but this is so slimy and uneven. You see that? It's not straight. So I can't really roll it up and then have it be perfect, you know? Some of them I probably could, like this one. So in my last kelp video, I titled it The Next Big Food Trend or The Next Big Sustainable Food Trend, something like that. And, and I really believe that kelp is going to become like the next big thing. Um, you know, like Asian countries, they've been eating kelp for centuries. But in the U.S., you know, not so much, right? Not so much kelp in their diet. But kelp has one of the, is one of the best nutrient-rich foods in the world. Naturally nutrient-rich, you know? It has so many benefits that I don't see. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Just rip it in half. That, that works. Perfect. All right, cool. Let's just do that. Look at that color change, immediate color change, so cool. Now I'm gonna boil that for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna heat up my wok, olive oil. This is actually beeswax, it's a replacement for plastic wrap more environmentally friendly, you know? This is reusable, biodegradable as well. Pretty cool. Garlic and one onion. Put a little more oil. Here we go, white wine. Make sure that it comes to a boil, then we're gonna throw the clams in. And we literally just gathered these clams 30 minutes ago. Gotta keep that heat high. All right, let's throw some chili flakes. Let's do a little salt and pepper too. I'm gonna lower the heat because most of the clams are done cooking. I'm gonna add some cream, some heavy cream, maybe like a quarter cup. And this is exactly like how I would make like a clam linguine or something like that. But we're using kelp instead. Alright, here we go. 
Oh, it's almost done. I'm going to bring the heat up again. Finish it with a drizzle of olive oil. Kelp pasta right here. Yes, this looks so good. It actually really looks good. Now we're ready to eat. Oh, these are nice and cold too. Mm -hmm. Cheers. <laughs> That's good. My buddy Alex, he works at a brewery, so he sent me this. It's, it's from uh, Eel River Brewing Company. And they're the first organic beer company, all organic beer company in the US. Uh, and dang, this does taste good. This is not sponsored by a beer company. Mm -hmm. I'm mainly saying that for YouTube because YouTube doesn't allow alcoholic sponsorships. But uh, if you got a beer company out there, feel free to send me some free beer. I don't mind it at all. Mm. Dang. Perfect flavor. No, that's good, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so good. The kelp has a nice crunch to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Dude, this is so good. No, I'm telling you, you gotta try this. Mm -hmm. This is so good. Yeah, I think it satisfies the pasta craving. Mm -hmm. It's right? not exactly like pasta. You can tell the difference, but this is good. Mm -hmm. And there's always the sauce system. <laughs> Get a sauce box. If I got this in a restaurant, I'd be like, damn, this is good. I was like, I need to make this. I feel like I'd be pretty excited if I saw it at the restaurant. Mm-hmm. Kelp. Mm. Next big thing, I swear. And I was trying to say earlier while I was cooking um, how healthy kelp is and so much benefits uh, it has for, for your body. And also, the sustainability factor is very high. I was mentioning in my last kelp video that we have a declining number of kelp in California. But that's only in California. Up in Alaska, their kelp is booming and it grows at a very fast rate. So there's a lot of wild kelp and they're starting to also farm kelp as well. But I'm pretty sure it's still like very cost efficient and it's not too much um, emission that gets put into farming kelp because it grows really fast on its own. And I think all they have to do is plant it plant it i don't know how they plant it but and they just trim it they don't have to even pull it all out mm -hmm. depends what part of the kelp they're harvesting but if they're harvesting just the, the leafy parts just cut that off that's going to grow back by itself so it's very sustainable very 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 healthy and it's tasty too and companies like uh, barnacle foods like uh, the the company that i was talked about in the last kelp video they're making kelp really approachable for like the Western, you know, the Western people basically Ma making like hot sauces out of kelp and making salsa and pickled kelp and things like that, making it very approachable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For people that are not used to, you know, eating things from the sea. I had a cream, which is not healthy, All but you know, moderation. you need a balance. You need like, this is super healthy. So I need to bring it down a notch by adding mm -hmm. a little cream 
you know, adding some of that deliciousness, that savory creaminess, and it, it all balances out. And it's basically perfection. I think actually, maybe a little lemon juice. Mm. A little lemon juice will go well, huh? Maybe a little bit. Yeah, I know. But other than that, man, mm. this is perfect. And that is so good right there. Cheers guys. Kelp for the win. And no sand. No sand in the cleanse. Perfect. Mm. I noticed that. No sand. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. When you're harvesting, just leave it in water. <laughs> water. <laughs> leave it. Water. <laughs> leave it in the water while you're harvesting. So it spits out the sand and when and when you're ready to eat it sand free i could drink that i could drink that all day the creaminess and the clams give it that little saltiness and savory flavor that umami you know and the kelp with the texture and adding adding that little bit of that oceanic kind of flavor to it pure deliciousness absolutely good. healthy mm -hmm. And the clams always delicious mm. always absolutely on point i think this is one of the one of the top things like yeah because i don't know i think it's so unique mm. as well as we and delicious because like i'm sure somebody's done it somebody's done kelp pasta right yeah probably i'm sure somebody's done it but man it's the first for me and this is a game changer i think this is amazing and the health benefits that go along with it absolutely ridiculous and yeah in the last video i didn't really specify why why it was better you know why it was sustainable and then people were a lot of people were commenting saying like well why isn't cucumber sustainable then why isn't cucumber the next thing and then oh, but cucumber oh, people just said cucumber that's what they chose and they're like oh it's like because you pickle cucumber, right? You know? Oh, uh, yeah. So it's like pickles, you know? Because I was making the kelp pickles. Yeah. So they were like, oh, why isn't that sustainable? You know? Well, yeah, sure, cucumber's sustainable, but it doesn't have nearly the amount of health benefits that it does with kelp. Yeah. Kelp is absolutely amazing. It has one of the highest in natural sources of iodine. Uh, it has like these cancer fighting properties and uh, so much more. A lot of vitamin C. And it has 10 times the amount of calcium than milk and the list goes on and on and on do your own research you know if you like to know everything but kelp i'm telling you is one of the best things and it's going to be one of the next up and coming foods that we're going to start seeing a lot more in restaurants that's all i gotta say <laughs> <laughs> anyways guys thank you for watching another episode of outdoor chef life we really appreciate you and if you like the video, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. See you guys next time. Peace. Woo! That was a good one. <laughs> oh yeah, and you might be saying, California, declining kelp, but you're harvesting kelp. You see the way I harvested the kelp, right? Above the stipe, just that leafy section cut it off there it's gonna grow back a lot more sustainable so do it that way and you're good to go <laughs> <laughs>